Hey guys, what's up? It's Toy House here. If you haven't heard, Noxramas is coming out probably sooner than later, and this raid is infamous. It's legendary. It's considered the hardest raid of World of Warcraft vanilla. It has some insane gear, and it goes down in history as one of the least played raids in WoW history. In fact, only 23 guilds fully cleared Nax. I mean, think about it. How many people did you know who actually even set a foot in Noxramas back in the day? Probably not many many people, let alone anyone actually clearing the entire raid. In fact, Blizzard said something like 3% of players cleared at least one Nax boss back in vanilla. So why was Naxxramas the least played raid in the history of WoW? Well, in order for us to understand that, we'll need to get a better understanding of Nax itself. So Naxxramas was originally a 40-man raid instance floating above the Eastern Plaguelands. It was a massive necropolis and had the unquestionable honor of serving as the seat of one of the Lich King's most powerful officers, Major Domo, the dreaded Lich, Kel'Thuzad. The instance was regarded as the most difficult before the release of the Burning Crusade and should not have been attempted at level 60 without at least 40 well-equipped, preferably tier 2 or tier 2.5 armor players. Noxramas was also the home of many of the most powerful items of the pre-BC era, and 60-plus quests with rewards such as Aetish, Great Staff of the Guardian, and all tier 3 items available in the game. With the release of the Burning Crusade, finishing this instance still required 25 to 30 well-equipped level 70 players. The dungeon was added in patch 1.11, making it the last non-expansion instance added to the game, as well as the last 40-man instance. As I'm sure you're aware, in the World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King expansion, Naxxramas was moved to Northrend and returned to the introductory level 80 raid dungeon. Like all the other Wrath raid dungeons, Naxxramas has both 10-man and 25-man versions. What you might not be aware of is that it wasn't entirely the same raid. Alexandros Mograine, one of the four horsemen of the original vanilla Naxxramas, did not make the transition to Wrath of the Lich King and was instead replaced by Baron Rivendare, the final boss of Undead Stratholm. So how the heck do you even get in there? Well, to enter Naxxramas, you had to be attuned through the Argent Dawn by completing the Dread Citadel Naxxramas, whose cost varied based on reputation level. Honored is 60 gold, 5 arcane crystals, 2 nexus crystals, and a righteous orb. Revered is 2 arcane crystals, 1 nexus crystal, and 30 gold, and exalted is free. So, not incredibly hard to get into Naxxramas. So why so few players even setting foot inside? It couldn't be the attunement, because compared to the Anixia or even Molten Core attunement, this is nothing. Perhaps the entrance was too hard to find? Well, to enter Naxxramas, you'll need to locate the Teleport Spire. The Teleport Spire in the middle of Plaguewood, so not that hard to find, was the only way into Naxxramas. After becoming attuned, one simply had to step onto the Runic Circle in the center of the Spire to teleport into Naxxramas' center chamber. But it wasn't always this way. Just like Molten Core was originally entered from Blackrock Depths, Noxramus was once intended to have its raid instance portal in Stratholm, outside the Slaughter Square. Carefully by using a flying mount to approach Stratholm from the outside shows that an old version of the Necropolis is still flying near Slaughter Square, beyond a raid portal. The tunnel leads to an abandoned place where an invisible Necropolis is, which can be seen with a model viewer. The minimap file for Nexramus is also called Stratholm Raid. Nexramus is structured like a giant wheel. Players enter at the center of the necropolis and then choose one of four wings to progress through. The abomination wing is filled with abominations, of course. It's likely one of the most physically intensive wing, as abominations physically hit rather hard. Slimes there deal nature damage as well. The final boss is a Frankenstein-esque monster known as Thaddeus. Then there's the Plague Wing, a wing where players have to deal with various different diseases, creatures, known as uh, you know bats, gargoyles, bog beasts, oozes as well, and gargoyles, or sorry, ghouls. The final boss there is Lotheb, which is this fungal monster who's also in Hearthstone, which makes spells cost five more. The spider wing contains, well, you, you guessed it, spiders, but also Nerubians and a few acolytes. 
And the final boss is Myxna, the giant spider. And, uh, of course, uh, the Death Knight wing is filled with, you guessed it, Death Knights, known for their combination of powerful shadow magic, <laughs> shadow magic and, and melee attacks. The final bosses uh, are the Four Horsemen. Uh, one of the Four Horsemen is High Lord Mograine, who uh, has an important role in the Ashbringer storyline, which should be obtainable after you acquire the corrupted Ashbringer from Mograine. The Four Horsemen were considered, as you probably know, the hardest bosses in the instance until Kel'Thuzad. Once the final bosses of the Four Wings are defeated, players will gain access to the final wing, so to speak, of Naxxramas, in which they will encounter the Frostworm, Saffron, and the Lich King, sorry, and the Lich, not Lich King, Kel'Thuzad. Each boss drops a different set uh, b uh, through a token. Each uh, boss and its drops are listed uh, online. I'm sure you could find them. On the wall of each boss chamber in various places are fruit frozen runes. Now, these frozen runes require a word of thawing, which is a tradable drop from trash mobs to defrost. And defrosting a frozen rune yields a number of uh, tradable blue frozen rune items that are used in crafting frost resistance gear. Frozen runes are also consumables, behaving like greater fire protection potions. Uh, due to the high quality and projected need as reagents for the craftable frost resist recipes, it is not advisable to use these runes as consumables, however. So don't be a noob and use these free freaking runes uh, when you should be using them to craft gear. Cool. All right, so you have to beat the last boss in each wing to progress. We've kind of talked about that. Once you beat all four wings, you then get to fight Saffron, and after you fight and defeat Saffron, the dragon, you may challenge Kel'Thuzad. Something curious about this fight is that glimpses of snowy terrain can be seen out of the windows in each corner of Kel'Thuzad's room. It's guessed that what you're seeing out of these windows is meant to be Northrend through portals from which Scourge emerged during the encounter. Where this wing is meant to be placed within Naxxramas, eh, it's unknown. So how hard is it to clear Naxxramas? Well, the first full clear was done by the Horde Guild Nihilum, or Nihilum, or some other pronunciation, on Magtheridon on September 7th, 2006, which was two and a half months, or 90 days after Nax came out on June 20th, 2006. Compare that to, say, AQ40 at 113 days, and it looks like Nax Ramus is actually a little bit easier. Although, to be fair pre-nerf Cthune was quite literally unkillable. And then compare that to Molten Core, which took 154 days to clear after release, or Blackwing Lair at 77 days, or even Anixia at 69 days, Naxxramas doesn't seem like anything special. Molten Core, to be fair, was released before everyone was max level, so take the 154 days with a grain of salt, or a lot of salt, whichever you prefer. And while we're talking about difficulty... In Naxxramas, the easiest wing is considered to be the Spider Wing, Instructor Resuvius being the easiest boss, arguably comparable, however, to Grobulus. However, Grobulus was located behind Patchwork, and Patchwork is not an easy boss, and many people consider him a gear check boss because he's so difficult. The Plague Wing bosses Noth and Hagen are considered to be on a uh, somewhat similar level of difficulty of Anubra Khan, but in different aspects. For example, Hagen is very difficult in the individual coordination aspect. Abomination Wing bosses are in the middle, with the exception of the very easy Grobulus, as we hinted. Patchwork, again, is conceived as the gear check and uh, a bit of a healer's fight. The most difficult bosses in order of rising difficulty are Thaddeus, Lotheb, Gothic the Harvester, and ending at the Four Horsemen. In Noxramus, there are four schools of magic that you'll want resistances for. Nature, Frost, Shadow, and Fire. The beginning parts of three of the four wings, Plague, Spider, and Abomination, have tons of nature damage. So this is kind of good news for players who built up their nature resistance gear in AQ. Players will also need a lot of frost resistance to fight the final bosses in Naxxramas. Kel'Thuzad is a lich, but does not require a lot of frost resistance to defeat him. The Saffron encounter, however, is much different 
you are going to need tons of frost resistance in order to fight him. Somewhere around uh, 150 to 200. Frost resistance gear has proven proven to be uh, hard to find. You might find some rings or, or something like that. But um, you're going to be able to find much more in phase six. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are there is the guy who you can talk to who will help you craft some epic frost resistance pieces. Shadow is the third major resistance required. Death Knights and Necromancers use powerful shadow magic, and Kel'Thuzad himself has a few shadow spells as well. The final boss in the Plague Wing, Lotheb, uses shadow-based damage as well. Shadow resist gear can be found, you know, all throughout various instances, so it shouldn't be a problem. Warlocks especially uh, should already be equipped with this if they tanked Twin Emperors in Anchorage. And last, certain boss, recounter, certain boss encounters need some fire resistance, like Grand Widow Fairlina and the Four Horsemen. There's that meteor and, you know, whatever Fairlina does. So, finally, after we've gone through all of this data, can we answer why Noxramus was the least played raid in the history of WoW? So much so that the raid was brought back in Wrath of the Lich King so more players could experience it. Was it bad internet connections, terrible computers, not enough time? Or was it the fact that it was new, and as with all things that are new, they aren't figured out yet? There were no guides, no best-in-slots required by our class leader. The difference between raiding Nax back in 2006 and now in 2020 is 14 years of theory crafting, optimization, and data consolidation boiled into perfectly tweaked guides explaining the exact consumables to have, add-ons that tell you what to do when, and videos walking you through the fight, like literally. I mean, that just didn't exist back then. And even with all this, it's still possible to wipe. Heck, I saw Asmongold wipe on the horseman on the PTR a few weeks ago. So that's just to show how hard the raid really is and was back then. All the same could really be said about AQ as well. And to be ready for Nax, you need to have a lot of AQ gear. So I think really the reason so few people played Nax was because so few people cleared AQ40, got that gear, and then finally entered Nax. And you needed 40 of those people to have that AQ40 gear. Then to top it all off, on January 16th, 2007, something happened. Something big happened. The Burning Crusade was released. So not only was there a time cost to become geared for Nax, there was also limited time in order for it to stay and remain relevant. Many people probably saw TBC on the horizon and said, nah, I'll just wait for TBC to come out. I'm good on vanilla for now. All these elements coupled together is why I think Nax was the least played raid in the history of World of Warcraft. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.